Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. Today we're going to start a review of the Henry Company American-made reproduction of the original 1860 Henry rifle. So what we have here are two different reproduction 1860 Henrys. This one is an Italian manufactured one from Uberti. This is the American manufactured one from the Henry Company. They're both chambered in 45 Colt, so we are comparing apples to apples. And I have to say I actually prefer 45 Colt. In this instance, a straight wall cartridge case is much easier to reload and deal with than 4440. And since neither of them are going to be chambered in 44 Henry, the original cartridge of the 1860 Henry, it's sort of a moot point. So I went with 45 Colt. Um, I already have some videos out with this Italian Uberti. I've had this for years, used it heavily, zeroed it, had to file the front sight to get a zero. The Italian gun came out of the box with no real zero on it. We had to mess with windage and elevation just to get it on target, although it was capable of being put on target. Um, and it shoots pretty well. You've seen me in matches already with this if you watch our channel. Um, nice gun, works well, it's been reliable. However, when you look at the American reproduction, the fit and finish is astonishingly better. Um, this thing is quite honestly beautiful. I think that this could be potentially an heirloom rifle. Um, the Uberti rifle is nice, there's no doubt about it, but the American made Henry reproduction is gorgeous. Um, the seam lines are so seamless that when you put your finger over it, you can't even really perceive that they're there. They're barely visible. Um, the actual gunmetal brass framed receiver is shiny and gorgeous. You could use it to uh, as a mirror. Um, the Italian one was shinier when I first started with it, but I've shot this for years with black powder and other stuff. So it's got some kind of coloring change to it, um, but it was never as gorgeous as this American reproduction. Um, the American wood is amazing. It's fantastic. The Italian wood's fine. It's got a, like a, a varnish on it, a shellac. It looks okay. Nothing wrong with it. Um, there are some differences between the guns. Right off the bat, they look initially exactly identical, but they're not. Um, the American Henry has a blued lever and hammer. The Italian reproduction has a case hardened lever and hammer. Um, the Italian one, at least this one, has sling swivels at front and rear. This American reproduction does not. So um, we have not fired this American reproduction Henry rifle at all yet. There's no rounds put through this gun whatsoever. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna shoot groups at 50 yards. We're shooting 45 Colt. There's not even a reason to go to 100. Let's start at 50 and see what we get. We've got two steel targets dot range we're gonna use for that. The splash of the lead bullets will give us everything we need to know data-wise from a group perspective. This uh, Aberdi Italian Henry, I've already zeroed as I said. So this one we know is on target. We're gonna shoot groups on this. And since this one, the American made Henry, we've never even fired once. I'm curious, when we take it out of the box, does it have a zero already? And if so, how close is it to being perfect in terms of a zero? Do we have to futz with this American made Henry as much as we did the Italian one to get it on target? Or will it just pretty much be there right out of the box, as well as group sizes? The ammunition I'm using today is hand loaded because manufactured, uh, essentially commercially manufactured 45 Colt is cost prohibitive. And I reload this stuff regularly. I'm shooting a 250 grain bullet at just about 900 feet per second. So we're not going light, we're not going super hot. We're doing what 45 Colt really should do out of a rifle length barrel. So let's go over to our shooting position. Let's shoot a couple rounds. Actually, we'll shoot five rounds out of the Uberti, then we'll shoot five rounds out of the American Henry, and then we'll go down range and see what we got. All right, we're starting off with the Italian Uberti 1860 Henry reproduction. We've got five rounds in the tube. We're gonna put those down range on the steel target on the left. Then we're gonna go pick up the American rifle and do the same thing. All right, there's five rounds down range. I can already tell it's not the most impressive group, but also we're shooting lead bullets out of a lever action rifle. So let's go get the American gun and see if it's different on the right side target. All right, here we are with the absolutely beautiful Henry American made 1860 reproduction. Five rounds of 45 Colt, same exact ammunition reloaded by same exact guy, same bullet, same powder charge, same everything. We have done nothing with the sights. We're gonna see if this has a zero right out of the box. Again, this is at 50 yards. I'm gonna hold center of mass on a steel target and see what we get. Very smooth, say that. <sighs> 
All right, I can tell you already there's a pretty definitive difference between the two rifles downrange. Let's go ahead and take a look with the camera. Then maybe we'll do it again and see if we get repeating, if we get the same results repetitively. All right, we'll see what we got here. This is the Uberti Italian reproduction hits, and this is the American Henry reproduction target. So we've got five hits on both, as I described earlier. One thing I want to remind you about that I said earlier in the video is that with the Italian rifle, I had to really work to get a zero on that gun. I had to modify the windage. I had to, you know, actually punch that rear sight left and right till I got the windage right and then peen it in place so it wouldn't move. And then I had to file the front sight down heavily to get an elevation zero. So the Italian gun took a lot of work to be able to have it on target. It was capable of getting it on target, but it was a lot of work. The American gun, first five shots fired were right on, spot on. Now, maybe the windage is slightly biased to the right, but I don't think it's enough to worry about. Reality is I aim center mass and I hit center mass on my target without any concerns whatsoever. And I didn't have to mess or futz with it at all. So that's a big advantage right there. Um, and by the way, that's consistent with most of what I've experienced with Uberti products. They very rarely have a zero out of the box and you gotta work at it. So we got five shots, one, two, three, four, five, five hits total. The greatest spread is from here to here. Let's use the ever precise finger inch method to get it. One, two, three, four, four and a half inch spread. So this is a four and a half inch group at 50 yards, iron sights, 45 Colt, you know, four and a half inches out of a rifle at 50 yards, most people be like, what the heck? But you're dealing with lead ball here and all those inconsistencies that come with that. So I, I think that's fine. You're, you're doing what you need to do with it and you're getting the hits. So let's see what the American equivalent is. Again, five hits, one, two, three, four, five. Greatest spread is from here to here in elevation. One, two, three, four, eh, about four inches here. So eh, not that different. Um, this looks a little tighter. It's definitely zeroed better right out of the box. But in terms of practical accuracy, both guns seem to perform very equally. Let's go ahead and paint these targets and try it again and see if it tightens up or loosens up and we knock some rust off of our own shooting skills here, see if we see a difference. All right, so this time let's do another five rounds out of each gun. However, this time we'll start with the American reproduction and then we'll move over to the Italian one. Here we go, 50 yards. Wow, that group looks actually quite a bit better. Uh, it's a slightly foul bore right now. There might have been some oil or something in there. First of all, it's hitting right to point of aim. 50 yards, dead spot on. We'll see when we go down range. However, that group is obviously better than the first one right off the bat. So that's why we shoot multiple groups, right? Let's go ahead and grab the Italian gun, do the same thing, go down range and check our results. All right, here we are with the Uberti Italian reproduction. Gonna load another five rounds and do the same thing. Yards, left target. Pretty definitive difference, quite honestly. Let's go check it out. All right, here we go with uh, five rounds out of each gun, second iteration. This again is the Uberti Italian reproduction. This is the American Henry rifle reproduction. So uh, right off the bat, you can see that this group tightened up. I think there might've been some oil or just grease in the bore. I didn't even do anything with it. I took it out of the box and shot it. So the first group was a little bigger than this one. Second group, it's actually tightening up. 
Not only that, the windage sort of moved exactly where you'd want it. This is right out of the box. Um, I've done nothing to these sights. I'm very impressed with this part of the gun. The reality is the fact that you could take it out and just shoot it is great. You don't have to mess with these sights at all is a huge bonus. Um, so this is much tighter. One, two, three, four, five. Five hits here. Biggest spreads right here. One, two, three. Three and a half inch group. Three and a half inch group out of 50 yards with my hand loads on the second iteration. We'll do a third one to see what happens with the third one. Here's my Italian reproduction. Uh, again, one, two, three, four, five hits. Greatest spread is right here. One, two, three, four, five inches out of this again. So the Italian gun has consistently given us between four to five inches. The American gun just tightened up and gave us three and a half inches at the same distance. So All right, so now that we've done some shooting with these guns, let's go ahead and open them up and look at the internals and see if there's any differences in there between the Italian replica and the Henry USA, USA manufactured reproduction. In that regard, I've already taken the side plate off of the Italian gun. And to show you how that's done on a Henry or even a Winchester 1866, uh, very similarly, is you just take the screw on the left side of the receiver and pull it up high enough like that, that the plate will merely fall off the right side. Now, let me warn you that these plates, both on the American and Italian reproductions and the originals, are literally razor sharp. These edges will cut you in a heartbeat. And so be very careful with these plates if you're removing them. But I think once we take them apart, you can actually see that there are some actual differences between the Italian and the American reproduction 1860 Henry. The Uberti Italian one has machined parts. The, this toggle link is completely machined. This, I'm not sure what this is. This is either cast or mim, but there are cavities inside of it. So if I were to pull, let's see if I can get that out really easily. There it is. So this is the uh, Italian toggle link from the right side of the receiver. And then let's pull the American one out if we can get it out here. There we go. And so if we compare the American reproduction, Henry, to the Italian reproduction, Henry, you can see that this is a machined part and that there's something else going on here. Like I said, it looks either like it's cast or mim. I'm thinking it's mim, but it's weird that these cavities are in there. I wonder if that was a design intention on their part or to lighten the weight of them or not. But this feels like a piece of steel and this feels... To be honest, and I'm not sure that there's any problem with it, but it feels chintzy in comparison. So um, the rest of this is hard to really say much more different about. Of course, we mentioned some of the other differences like the, the uh, case hardened lever and it versus the blued lever. Those are aesthetic differences as far as I'm concerned. But this matters to me. Uh, personally, I'm more interested in the historicity of the gun than I am the looks of the gun. And the Uberti American Uberti, excuse me, the American Henry absolutely has the looks down. The aesthetics are beautiful um, in terms of fit and finish. But when you actually open the gun up and look on the insides, the Italian gun is a closer reproduction of the original than the American reproduction. For whatever reasons, I don't know why they did that, but this is not my preference. If it were me, that, that's a point in favor of the Italian reproduction. So of course, there's a toggle link on each side. I'm going to have to drop that in there. I'm going to go the same back on this side as well. Um, and uh, that's that. So to go ahead and put the guns back together, it's very simple, just the reverse of what we did. You drop the plate back in alignment with the screw on the opposite side of the receiver. Tap on it a little bit and then screw it back into place. Gotta get it lined up, there it goes. Let's do the same for the American gun. And there we go. That's all there is to field stripping these guns. You can take both side plates off and you can completely field strip them if you need to. But just getting one side plate off is generally enough. The other thing I do want to talk about is the lifter itself. So this is the lifter out of an Italian gun. And of course, both of them mechanically function the same way. But this lifter has been removed from my Uberti because I have replaced it with a, a third party product that allows you to fire 45 Cowboy Special. So if this is a, well, this is a full length, standard length, 45 Colt cartridge, and this is a 45 Cowboy Special. 
It's really essentially nothing more than a cut down shortened 45 Colt case, but there's a little bit of differences when you get them manufactured. This one is actually made by the guy, it's 45 special, but you can cut down original 45 Colt cases to the length. But what's really cool about this is that when you go to 45 special and you use his modified lifter, which has like a little spring plunger in here, so to allow it to not overseat, I'll talk about that in a minute. This allows you with this modified lifter to then turn this original or this reproduction 1860 Henry into the original capacity of the original 1860 Henry. What that allows you to do is get the full capacity out of your reproduction. Now, one thing that's a point in favor for the Italian gun, in my opinion, is that the, re the aftermarket lifter part, if you wanted to convert this to 45 Special and return it to the original capacity of the original 1860 Henry rifle, which I'm returning 44 Henry, um, that lifter that I've replaced in this gun to allow me to use this 45 Cowboy Special cartridge does not function properly in the Italian gun. Now, maybe you could whittle and work on it long enough to make that lifter work in here, but the lifter that you get from him to convert your gun to 45 Special is a drop-in fit part to the Aberti Italian guns. It is not a drop-in fit part to the Henry USA rifle. So once again, in terms of historicity, which is my personal interest, being able to convert my Uberti Henry with a aftermarket lifter and some aftermarket reloading dies and uh, brass to the original capacity of the original gun is a really interesting thing to me. And I find that very compelling. So to me, that's a point in favor of the Uberti rifle. There's no reason they couldn't do that same aftermarket part for the Henry USA rifle. The reason that exists for the Uberti is the Uberti is much more prolific on the market, mostly because of the lower MSRP. And as a result, he's being used in cowboy action shooting environments and such, more likely so than the US manufactured reproduction, means that aftermarket parts are much more prolific for this gun. So one of the things that's interesting about the 45 Cowboy Special and the 45 Colt, because I mentioned earlier in this video, that straight wall cartridges provided something that you could do that you couldn't do if you got this chambered in 4440 is this. You can actually make shortened cartridges as long as the overall length is appropriate to your lifter for the gun to function. And this 45 Special, when you load it properly with the right weight bullet and the right powder charge, actually identically replicates the ballistics of the original 44 Henry rimfire. And to me, that's a very compelling thing. It's cool to be able to use 45 Colt because of accessibility. But if you want the original capacity and original ballistics of the 44 Henry cartridge, even though it's not a rimfire in your reproduction 1860 Henry, then for me at least, the aftermarket part that allows me to convert to this and originally restoring it to its original capacity is a real winning point in favor of the Italian gun. So that was probably a bit techy, but the end result being a couple things here. One, the American gun, the Henry USA gun, is absolutely a beautiful rifle. The fit and finish of this is better than pretty much any commercial gun I've dealt with on the market out of the box. It really is a piece of art. If you want to buy an 1860 Henry that's made in the USA because it was originally an American rifle and you want it to be an heirloom piece, I would recommend the Henry USA 1860 Henry reproduction. If you're looking for historicity and shootability and just shooting the bejesus out of the gun, I would recommend getting the Uberti. The lower cost allows you to abuse it in a way that you would not want to abuse the Henry USA reproduction and the aftermarket parts availability, as well as the ability to convert it to 45 Cowboy Special and therefore the original capacity of the original Henry makes the Uberti USA, excuse me, the Uberti uh, Henry my personal choice. Now we saw in the accuracy test that the US rifle had a little bit of an edge in terms of the overall accuracy about an inch less at 50 yards. That's something you have to consider. If that's something that bothers you or is an issue to you, then you absolutely want to look at the Henry. Personally, I think both of these guns function within the tactical capabilities of what their design was with the lead nose bullets that we're using for these cartridges. And so therefore the slightly less accurate Italian gun makes no difference to me. The other thing you want to be aware of if you're going with the Italian gun is that you're going to probably, I have never used an Aberti gun that did not require this, you're going to have to drift the windage and potentially file on the front sight to get it to hit to point of aim. And the American Henry USA did not have to do that at all. It came out of the box and was zeroed at 50 yards dead on. So if you're willing to tinker with the Italian rifle and want to tinker with capacity and aftermarket parts, go Italian. 
if you want an heirloom and an absolutely beautiful gun that just works out of the box, zeroed for the first round fired, then go with the Henry USA 1860 Henry. Either way, I think they're both compelling, interesting, historically accurate products, and I think that you couldn't go wrong with either one of them. They're just based on the differences about which one you have to deal with or wedding, what you want to do if you're happening to get an 1860 Henry lever gun. Guys, thank you for tuning in to this kind of content. If you like this kind of stuff, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's completely you, the viewer, that supports this channel. We're not uh, sponsored by anyone and take no advertising revenue from anyone whatsoever. It's completely a crowdfunded project by viewers like you. If you can't, we understand. Subscribe to the channel. We're distributed on multiple distribution points. You can find them all at inrange.tv. Thanks, and share with your friends.